Okay, so I was discussing on the forums recently about jump jets. Uh, somebody was claiming that jump jets would make your mech turn faster. My contention is that no, jump jets do not make your mech turn faster. And the reason why is because your turn rate, pull it up here. Let's see. Come on, scroll for me. Your turn rate is a set fixed number. In this case, for my mech, it is 92.24 for the Phoenix Hawk KK that I have here. Now, the person on the forums was saying that jump jets will buff your turn rate. They don't. The only way that you can buff your turn rate is if you invest in the mobility tree by getting the skills anchor turn. So that adds 15% to your turn rate. 15% is a direct buff to your turn rate. Now, jump jets are commonly considered to let you turn faster because of the effect that they have while you're in the air. But we're going to put all that to the test. So let's go here to the testing grounds. We will go to Crimson Straight. There it is. And we'll test this and we'll see what happens. For now though, what I want to demonstrate is that your turn rate does not change. So let's run out here to Charlie 7. I'm just going to stand right out here. This is about good right here. All right, so let's see. We're going to line up with this building right here in front of us. I'm going to do a complete 360 degree circle. We'll time how long that takes. So when the timer says 30, we'll start. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Ah, I stopped a little bit. We'll start again here at 30, 38. All right, so roughly three seconds to do a complete turn. Um, it's a little hard to judge, but it looked to be about three seconds. So now we're going to increase the throttle up here to about 50 kph, and we'll do the same thing with about 50 kph. So when I cross in front of that, we'll note the time, Artillery strike. Okay. and that'll be when we start. So here we go. Ready, set, go. All right, pretty close to three seconds again, slightly different time. And now we're going to go up to 100 kph, roughly double the speed. And we'll do the same thing. Here we go in a circle. And then same building. <clears throat> here we go. Set, start. End. And pretty close to three seconds. Now what I'll do is I'll pause the stream, the uh, video here and I'll go and I'll rewatch it and I'll make the exact times, but they're all pretty close to three or four seconds. So I'm jump jetting now. What we're going to do is we're going to try to do the same test while jumping towards that building. It's going to be a little trickier, but we're going to try it. So here we go. Towards the building now. And jump. Turn. And I'll have to go back and look at the video to time that. All right. So now we're going to move on to the timing, and then we'll move on to the written portion of it. Okay, so now that we've done the in-game testing portion, let us test the physics aspect of it. So as I was saying in the game, your jump jets do not, I repeat, do not provide a turn rate buff. A turn rate buff would be like saying my um, Phoenix Hawk that I was using has a de turn rate of 92.24 degrees per second and using jump jets increases it by 5 degrees per second to 97.24 degrees per second. That That's false. It does not do that. Jump jets do not add any sort of buff to your turn rate. They have a different effect which I'll go into in a moment. For now, let's say that I'm turning in place on the ground like I did in the video. Now I'm going to rotate my Mac. Forgive my really, really bad artistic skills. This is going to be 92 degrees. I'm going to just put the little degree sign per second. All right, and again, I'm a horrific artist, so please don't get hung up on my, my abilities to draw. All right, so if I'm standing in place, I'm turning at 92 degrees per second. That is my turn rate, okay? Now, let's say that I go with a larger surface area. Let's say I'm going, hello. Let's say that there's no fill. There we go. And we're going to grab this. We're going to put ourselves a little dot here. 
This time we're going to add a fill. There we go. All right, that is the mech. Nope, come on. Come on. It is not wanting to obey me. There it goes. All right, whew, that was more tedious than it should have been. Okay, so grab my pencil again. Wrong color. There we go. All right, so this is the mech. This is my uh, Phoenix Hawk right here. At zero K P H. All right, use my super high definition, technologically advanced Microsoft Paint. All right, so now this is my Phoenix Hawk. It's going to be at approximately fifty K P H. All right. Now, what do you think the turn rate is going to be at this point? If you answer 92 degrees per second, then you're right. It's still 92 degrees per second. And now it's running like this in a circle because it has a linear velocity. So I'm going to change to the color here. Let's go light blue. Right, let's go green. Okay. So if you are running in mech, at zero kph you are at rest and the only component to your angular velocity angular velocity being your ability to turn so if this is going to be well, let's let's scratch that let's let's get rid of this that's a horrible looking circle let's do this we'll make um we'll make a regular circle over here different different from the other one all right so you're um at any one point in a circle you have something known as a, tan a tangent. A tangent is a line that touches the circle at one point. And so if the mech is right here, so that's the mech, that's the Phoenix Hawk right there, then my, ta my tangential or speed, or in this case what I'm going to call my linear velocity, is whatever it is that I'm running. So in this case here, for for this one, it's going to be 50 kph. So let's say it's 50 here as well. I'm just going to write the 50. We already have the information on the other side. So my linear velocity, my tangential speed here is 50 kph. Okay. That's what it is at that point. Now, you also have two components to your. There we go. So you have two components. You have the component that moves horizontally and the component that moves vertically on the screen. And together, they make the curve that is located right here. And you have an angle, which would be theta. And so they create your radius of a turn. They create your arc length, OK? Your radius being from the center out to here, arc length being the, the point of the arc right here. All right, so I know this is a lot of math and it's probably sounding a little bit confusing. Suffice to say, when you're at rest, right here in the middle, the Phoenix Hawk at zero kph, when you're at rest, you have no arc length, like up here in the corner. You have no vertical, or I'm sorry, you have no linear speed, like right here or right here. There's none of that. You're at complete rest. The only velocity you have is what's called angular velocity, which exists both in this example and in the in the in the one where you are at rest. Pardon my text message tone. The difference is that your angular velocity here is comprised solely of your rotational speed. Whereas your angular angular velocity out here on the edge of the circle is comprised of both your turn rate, the 92 degrees per second as well as your linear velocity of 50 kilometers per hour. So now there's multiple components to it. There's actually a formula that relates them, and uh, which I'll go into here shortly. Okay, so I went ahead and I pulled back the um, formulas, which I'll put on display right here for now. So basically, you've got these formulas here. Your linear velocity, which is basically your linear distance divided by time. And then you have your angular velocity, which is your angular distance divided by time. Very similar formulas, but angular is more complicated, and which I'll go into shortly. 
So they can be described as your velocity, which is equal to your distance divided by time, or your angular velocity, which is equal to your angular distance divided by time. And typically Q is theta, but I don't have a theta on the keyboard at the time, so I wrote it as Q. So Q, your angular velocity, can be rewritten as Q equals S over R, where S is your arc length and R is your radius. Does that make sense? So basically, you can then rewrite your angular velocity as angular velocity W is equal to the arc length, the arc length of your circle that you are running, divided by the radius times, <clears throat> excuse me, radius times time. Sorry, I got a, um, got a frog in my throat all of a sudden. Okay, so arc length divided by radius times time. So, what all that means is that you can also relate your linear speed to your angular speed by saying that your linear speed V is equal to your angular speed W times the radius of your circle. So, to put that in, to put that in better specs, what that means is, I'm going to come over here a little bit. I'm going to say V equals D over T. W equals S over R times my right, little asterisk for multiplication looks horrible. And then we're going to say that V is equal to W times R. Okay? Those are the three formulas. So you can also say that W is equal to to V over R. Your angular velocity is equal to your linear velocity divided by your radius. And let's actually move this all up a little bit. We're going to slide this up here so that we can see it better. Here we go. So if we're running at 50 kph, that means that our angular velocity is going to be equal to 50 kph divided by the radius of the circle, whatever the radius may be. Okay. Now let's say we run a larger circle, say about like that maybe, no fill, slide this over a little bit right about there, okay, let's make it a little bit larger, that way it's a little bit further away from all the writing here, that way I can write a little more easily, okay, I'm going to come up here, going to put another dot, once again we're going to fill this, make it black, All right, so now we're moving my Phoenix Hawk at 100 kph, and it's, it's running in a circle still at approximately 92 degrees per second, okay? So the rate of turn that the angular velocity, the rate of turn is still the same, 92 degrees per second. But here my velocity, my linear velocity has doubled again. And my radius has increased too. And when I timed the videos, I found they're all about three to four seconds. So, I mean, depending on how I read it, um, you know, any, any human errors of mine, it, they're all really close, three and a half seconds or so perhaps to make each one of these turns around that, um, around that post I was measuring, that building. So I'd say it's pretty safe to say it is the same at all points. So you're probably wondering, what does this have to do with jump jets? I'm getting to that. So if you're in a brawl and you're standing still in the brawl, you're turning in place and you're not covering any ground. You're just turning in place. But if you're moving at half speed in a brawl, you're covering a circle like what I'm showing here. And the reason why people think you turn faster standing still is not because your turn rate is faster standing still but because you don't have to cover all this ground. If you're thinking about it, let's say the Phoenix Hawk can turn to look out to this angle. Actually, let's change that. I should, I should use a different color. We use light blue. Let's say that the Phoenix Hawk has a torso twist like this. The blue, the blue half of a pie here that I'm drawing. All right, so this is your, torso twist. I'm drawing over everything. It looks a little messy now, but you get the impression. If you're having to turn 
to bring your guns to bear it's a lot faster for you to cover standing still because there's no real ground to cover at all there's really no surface area you're just spinning in place but if you're running in a circle then and you can only turn to look here say this is your new point that you're looking towards you have to run all the way in a circle to see behind you now of course there's tricks you can stop reverse change the other way i understand all that and that's not a, this isn't a discussion about all the the balling tricks so forget all that for now this is strictly about turning my point is if you have any sort of linear velocity you are covering surface area now you have a, an arc length to your movement you're no longer moving in one dimension like here where you're spinning in place now you're moving in two dimensions like i showed over here you have two two components to your movement and because you have two separate components even though your turn rate doesn't change the amount of time it might take you to bring your guns to bear does change because now you have larger blind spots all this area behind you i'm going to shade it a little bit over here all this area behind you while you're moving all this is now blind spot whereas here yeah you've got blind spot but you can turn to cover pretty quickly but now because you're moving you're going to have all that forward speed that forward momentum you have so much more time that it requires you to bring your guns to bear that's why people think jump jets give you a faster turn rate and the reason being is that when you jump as i showed in the video when you jump you're not covering all this ground now as you jump instead of running in a circle your mech is moving in one direction you're back to one dimension of movement you no longer have two dimensions of movement like over here you have one dimension of movement let's draw a bubble for the mech right here gonna fill this with black again go back to my red pencil so the, the phoenix oh, I want a um, red pencil so the phoenix hawk still spinning 92 degrees per second but it's basically spinning in place this is the same as this just now you've also got that forward component due to, due to your velocity so you're, it's like your velocity it's like you have your velocity here like your two components but now suddenly by jumping into the air you've eliminated one component you're now back to moving in one direction and so your mech turns as if it's at zero kph as if you have no linear velocity so there's no arc length there's no movement you're not covering surface area you're not covering any kind of ground you're just spinning in place does this buff your turn rate no your turn rate remains 92 degrees per second that does not change but it does let you turn as if you're standing still which means it will take slightly less time to complete that turn so if i'm four seconds and the video is four seconds out here this i'm going to draw it over here this was three seconds and this was three seconds three three four so and of course there's slightly this was like right at three this was slightly over three i mean I, I can't do tenths or hundredths of seconds with the with the um clock that we have in mech warrior but you get the impression this is re reasonably close this is probably we'll say this was three and a half it was probably a little closer to three and a half seconds i can't say exactly so we'll say approximately that's a really sad looking ass so we're gonna fix that It's a better looking ass. All right, so three, roughly three and a half, roughly four. And it, your time to turn, even though your turn rate is the same, your time to turn increases because you have that two component, that, that two dimensional movement that requires you to cover actual ground, to cover actual surface area to complete a turn. Your fastest turn is when you're standing still. So that's why when you jump jet, it seems like you turn faster. It's not because you are turning faster, it's because your turning movement is the same as if you're standing still now you might say well you're picking you're, you're splitting hairs and and that's really inconsequential i mean yeah you're turning faster in the air just like you turn faster when standing still as opposed to how fast you turn when you're running now the reason why it's important to know the difference and it even though it seems like i'm splitting hairs is, is because i want to make it very clear this does not buff your turn rate there are some people that think that jump jets do that that just a quick little jump jet spurt will buff their turn rate dramatically but it doesn't it's also important to understand because if you have thrust to your jump jets 
you're no longer going to turn as fast as if you're standing still. Let's suppose this. I'm going to erase all this around here. Now, as you know, there are skills in the skill tree that allow you to add thrust to your jump jets to give you forward motion. Also, here's a trick. If you have jump jets on the back of your mech, it adds a little bit of forward thrust. If jump jets are in the feet of your mech, you have no forward thrust, okay? So if you have jump jets on the torsos of your mech and you have all of the skills um, that add um, forward thrust to your jump jets for that mech, then what's going to happen is you're now, you're no longer going to turn as if you're at zero KPH here, because suddenly you've added KPH to your jump jets. You now have added a linear component so now, whoops, forget to grab a circle. So now you're going to have a slight circle. Now, I can't say how large it's going to be. I haven't skilled that out or tested it. It will not be as large as if you are running full tilt or half tilt or whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, it's, it's going to be significantly less, possibly and even probably immeasurably less than if you had real speed going and you were running in a circle. But it is important to know, it will take you slightly longer to make a complete turn with jump jets in the air with forward thrust from the skill tree and with jump jets in the torsos than it would if you were standing still on the ground or you were jump jetting without forward thrust nodes from the skill tree and without jump jets in the torsos. You have them all on the feet, for example. It will take just a little bit longer. And that comes back to the fact that jump jets do not actually buff your turn rate. They simply change how you turn by removing that um, two-dimensional movement by, by removing that linear speed and making it so that you turn as if you have no linear speed and again if you add linear speed back into it with either the skill tree nodes or the jump jet placement or both you're no longer going to turn as if you're at zero kph you're going to turn as if you have some small amount of linear velocity it might be say 5 or 10 or 15 kph but it's going to have some sort of measurable effect and it's going to add some sort of slight decrease to how quickly you turn around in the air. Now, that's probably all clear as mud by now, but I hope you understand that. If you don't, feel free to ask questions. I can try to explain it better. Uh, experiment with it yourself if you want. But the bottom line is, yeah, there, there's no numerical buff, and the only reason why you turn faster in the air as opposed to running full speed on the ground is because you turn as if you're standing still on the ground. So like I said, if you have questions, feel free to ask them. I'll do my best to answer them. I hope you found this video helpful. And, you know, maybe it'll make a difference to you as you're theory crafting and building your max. In the meantime, this is Nightmare One signing off. Have a good day.